Thanks for joining our monthly community webcast. I am Jürgen Kress, part of the Oracle Digital Assistant and Integration Product Management Team to support you as a partner. In case you missed one of our webcasts, on-demand recordings are available. For details, please see our monthly community newsletter. In today's presentation, Santia and Rafi will talk about SOA suite modernization. Please feel free to post your questions via the conference, questions and answer tool, or Twitter hashtag Pass community. At the end of the webcast, we will answer your questions. Slides are available at the community workspace. Please do tweet or blog about products and services which are available today, and please don't blog about roadmap and future services. Objective of the call is to give you an update on SOA Suite. SOA Suite is a leading on-premises integration platform used by thousands of customers. We will present the SOA Suite roadmap, including new features and options to shift workload to the cloud and to run hybrid solutions with Oracle Integration Cloud, the strategic offering. SOA modernization is a great partner opportunity to offer services for your customer base, for example, to upgrade SOA Suite to the latest release or uplift SOA Suite on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So let's get started. I would like thanks to all the partners who published blogs last fiscal year and congratulations to the top blog posts, including number three, SOA Suite on Kubernetes by Michael, number two, Fusion Middleware 12C, the latest release, and number one, the change date and time format in Oracle integration by Anchor. Congratulations and thanks for your contribution. Same on the developer community blog. Number three blog post from Monica about WebLogic 12214, which is our leading J2E server. Blog post number two from Hermann on Visual Builder Cloud Service and how to use Oracle Chat, the Oracle design and development tool and number one blog post meetups. So make sure you join our local meetups to learn more about events like today. In case you missed the Partner Advisory Council in December, where we presented all insights about Oracle integration, please watch the on-demand versions, including the keynotes, day one on the Oracle Integration Cloud Vision and Roadmap, Extreme Scalability and Enhancement, and day two, we presented also SOA modernization, adapters and API management and visual builder cloud service. Please make use of our on-demand recordings. For all information, please read our community newsletter. The January edition is available and subscribe if you're not yet a member at tinyurl.com slash oracle IC. With this short introduction, I would like to hand over to Ravi and Sandhya. Thanks for joining and welcome to our webcast. Thanks Jorgen for that uh, introduction. Okay, so uh, today's SOA suit modernization uh, session is uh, going to be split into two uh, uh, components. The first one, we talk about SOA suit and uh, the roadmap for SOA suite. And then uh, we are going to uh, touch upon the hybrid uh, feature we have uh, within SOA suite and OIC. Uh, the next uh, the next bit of it uh, is going to be handled by uh, Ravi. He's going to touch upon the uh, SOA modernization options we have. Uh, so, and finally, uh, we also talk about uh, the opportunities for partners and uh, the call to action. So let's get started with uh, the roadmap. As most of you know, uh, we launched SOA Suite 12.2.1.4 uh, version uh, in uh, 2019. Um, in 2020, uh, we made uh, the SOA marketplace on OCI available. So this is the cloud offering for SOA, and uh, we recommend all uh, customers and partners to uh, uh, leverage SOA Marketplace and OCI because uh, it comes with all the native features of OCI. Later part of 2020, we also certified uh, production workloads on SOA on Kubernetes. Um, and what we uh, are uh, looking at the future of SOA is with SOA Suite 14.1.2. Um, this is going to be released uh, in the later part of this year or uh, in the beginning of uh, the next year. So this is uh, a little bit history and the future of uh, SOA Suite. Now, what do we have in SOA Suite? So this is a quick glance. Uh, the next version, as I said, is going to be called 14.1.2. And some of the planned feature list are 
uh, first is we are going to bring in some more um, enhancements into the hybrid, uh, hybrid integration features we have with Oracle integration. Then uh, we are going to introduce a net new adapter called the Kafka adapter. Uh, definitely, there are going to be, there are going to be some uh, key enhancements uh, to the Docker and Kubernetes functionality. Then we do some performance and resiliency improvements. Uh, customer enhancements uh, will also be taken up, and uh, we're also looking at upgrading uh, uh, the uh, uh, the enhancing the upgrade process that we have in uh, Sava Suite. So these are the key uh, themes that uh, we are working around uh, for fourteen point one point two. Uh, moving on, the next uh, is going to be some uh, discussion about the hybrid feature that we have within SUA and uh, OIC. So uh, uh, if the use case here uh, would be to leverage your existing investments that you've done in SUA, but um, did, uh, then you want to do your net new integrations in OIC, then you would want a mechanism to make a communication between the SOA suite orchestrations that you have built and the net new integrations that are going to build in, uh, be built on OIC. And for this, we have uh, the SOA uh, suite adapter uh, in uh, OIC. So what are the key features of uh, uh, SOA suite adapter in OIC? One is uh, it gives you an easy way to discover all your uh, SOA and service bus uh, workloads. Uh, then once you uh, choose uh, the SOA or service bus option on the adapter, it displays uh, uh, the set of uh, services and uh, composites available for you to um, interact with. So in your uh, OIC integration flow, you can choose the SOA services that you want to integrate with, and you can quickly uh, create an integration with your existing investments on SOA and service bus. And also you can leverage the OIC mapper to make uh, your uh, request and response uh, mappings. This is uh, a sample demo that I've recorded, uh, which will uh, take us through the feature that is SOA suite adapter and how we can uh, leverage this adapter within Oracle Integration Cloud. So like most of you are aware, this is the Oracle Integration homepage. Now here, uh, when we move into the connection section, um, we can uh, create a new connection, net new connection for the uh, SOA adapter. So on the list here, we uh, search for uh, SOA suite. And when we choose SOA suite, um, uh, SOA suite, uh, it gives us an option to uh, connect to uh, the SOA instance. So let us see a connector here. So here we give the service bus or SOA URL that we, uh, or the SOA instance that we want to connect to. And then uh, we also provide the credentials that is required. Test and save, the connector is ready. So in simple steps, we have established the connector connection. Now let us see how to leverage this particular connector in our integration flow. Now here a demo or there is an integration flow that I've created. Uh, let's get into that. Um, and uh, let us see how uh, we can uh, use this uh, adapter, I mean, connector that we created. So one option is to go to the invoke action and choose for the SOA suite adapter we uh, just created or um, in this case, I've already uh, created one. So let me uh, take you through the configurations that I've done. I've given it a name. Then the next step involves uh, choosing whether a SOA or service bus uh, workload I would want to establish a connectivity with. Um, so if I choose SOA, then the relevant details are displayed uh, down. If I choose service bus, then a service bus related information would be displayed. Now, the next here is uh, choosing the partition. Uh, we can either choose a default partition or any other partition uh, on which my particular SOA service is deployed. Now, in this scenario, I'm going to establish a connection with Sync Flights Booking Service. And uh, I've chosen the service that this particular uh, uh, visitor uh, provides. And then uh, the operation, the request object and response objects are all fetched from uh, the uh, visitor uh, directly. I do not have to configure any other details. And with this, I'm done with the wizard. So with this, what happens is uh, the process, uh, the operation and the request response objects, the metadata details are consumed by, by uh, OIC. And in my data mapper, I will have these uh, objects available for mapping. Now, let me show how the mapper looks. So 
the mapper now on the left side would uh, uh, generate the OIC uh, objects and on the uh, right side will generate the SOA service related objects. Now the mapping as most of you are aware is just a simple drag and drop. And if you have any functions that you want to apply, you can uh, definitely go ahead and apply them. So with this uh, simple steps, we are able to establish a connection uh, to our uh, SOA service through OIC. Now the change, uh, changes are saved and now let's activate this integration and see uh, how this would uh, perform in uh, runtime. So I'm just deploying the serv service here. Now, uh, once the uh, integration is activated, I use the test console. Uh, I already have a body configured, the adjacent payload configured for this scenario. Now, when I uh, 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 test this, uh, uh, submit this request, uh, what happens is um, the request flows through the so SOA suite adapter we created and eventually uh, it creates an invocation to the uh, SOA service. Now, let us first see how this uh, uh, looks in the, uh, you know, activity stream. So in the activity stream, uh, it goes through SOA uh, suite adapter. We also see a successful response from the SOA service. Now let's quickly move to the EM console, look at the flow instances. And in the flow instances, um, ideally we should uh, see a new um, instance getting uh, triggered here, an audit trial for the new instance that got created and um, it's got successfully completed. So in these uh, simple steps, we are able to establish a hybrid communication that is a, a cloud to ground uh, connection using the SOA suite adapter. One important uh, point to be emphasized here is a SOA suite adapter uh, works with agents. So if you have your SOA deployed within a firewall, you can use the agent and uh, establish a connection. And this can be applied even for SOA on OCI workloads. And uh, all that has to be um, uh, you know, kept in mind is we have to be on 12.2.1.3 uh, onwards. So I see it 12.2.1.3. Okay, now let's uh, move on. Uh, like we uh, just spoke about the SOA to uh, the OIC to SOA connectivity, SOA suite on prem uh, uh, to OIC connectivity becomes very important to complete this story of hybrid because we know we can make a connection from cloud to ground. And what do we have to make a connection from cloud to ground? That is often there could be flows in your uh, SOA where you want to invoke an uh, OIC uh, flow. And how are we able to do this? For this, the answer is a uh, JDEV uh, plugin that we have. So as I said, uh, you will be able to discover a lot of the Oracle integration flows from uh, JDeveloper through this plugin. So it simplifies in establishing a SOA to OIC con uh, connectivity. Uh, this is basically done through the REST adapter in um, SOA suite. Uh, uh, in the SOA suite uh, REST adapter, there is an option to use the OIC plugin to uh, browse through the integration flows that are uh, published. Now, again, this is available from 12.2.1.3 version of SOA suite. Uh, let's go into a demo of how this is done in a J Developer today. Like most of you are aware, this is our uh, J Developer ID, and I have a sample orchestration, uh, so orchestration service that I have uh, built here. Now I would like to uh, extend this service um, by invoking an OIC specific flow. Now let us see how this can be done. Firstly, on the right side, as you see here, uh, we can establish a new connection to an Oracle integration instance. So all uh, we have to do is first click on that and create a new, new connection, give it a name. In this case, I'm calling it hybrid connection YC. Then uh, the next step involves uh, giving the URL of uh, the instance. Uh, once the URL of the instance is provided, the username and password is also provided. And once uh, all these uh, details are provided, we can quickly test the connection and save the connection. So once the connection is saved, you see a success status here. 
uh, we have established connection to a specific OIC instance now from a J developer. But what still is pending is how to leverage this connection that we created. So for that, we drag and drop a REST adapter, uh, give it a name, and then uh, move ahead in the configuration process. Here, uh, this is the place where we give the Waddle or Swagger URL. Here, we have the option to even uh, choose the OIC connection which we created a while back. So when we click on that plus icon, uh, it creates a pop-up. Um, and this pop-up has the plugin, the Oracle Integration Connect plugin. And here in the drop-down, we choose the hybrid connection OIC that we created. created. And once uh, this is um, chosen, all the available uh, REST integrations in the particular OIC flow is available for us to um, integrate with. So in this, I choose the uh, very first uh, integration flow, which is called demo OIC to SOA integration. Uh, on choosing this, what happens is uh, all the metadata, the uh, battle and other details from the integration instance is captured into our J developer and all the request response objects are generated. And finally, um, the uh, required metadata details to establish connectivity with that integration flow is done. So then we uh, wire the um, new component we created, the REST adapter from the composite level. And then we move into the Bepel flow and create an invoke action and um, and then plug it to the uh, connector we created. And with this, uh, the connectivity is done and the rest of the SOA, uh, the Bepel aspects would remain the same. That is, we create an assign action and then we uh, pass the required uh, fields to uh, connect to that OIC service. So uh, with this in simple steps, we are uh, able to quickly and easily make a connection to an OIC integration flow. And it's hassle-free. You don't have to copy the Waddle. You don't have to do anything. You just have to create the OIC instance connection. And you can uh, browse as many as the integration flows as, as required for your scenario and uh, keep going. So with this, um, we come to the uh, end of the um, uh, hybrid uh, discussion. Uh, I would want to now uh, uh, hand it over to Ravi for uh, the SUA modernization choices and options. Over to you, Ravi. Thanks, Sandhya. Um, there are a couple of questions in the Q and A panel. I can just, uh, uh, you know, uh, okay. Yeah, read that out and and you can answer. Um, so first of all, which version of JDev has OIC plugin? So this is uh, from 12.2.1.3 version onwards. For 12.2.1.3, you will have to download a patch uh, to have the OIC plugin. Uh, but for 12.2.1.4, it is available by default. So if you're going to download 12.2.1.4, you don't have to do any other things. You will have them by default. Got it. Uh, there's another question, and uh, this probably requires some uh, some more information. Is J developer able to deploy these services externally? Is there any automation mechanism available to support deploy process? I think this is not specific to the plugin, but uh, in general about the uh, J developer uh, capability. Okay. Um... So my understanding is there are a set of uh, JDEV plugins that are available today, which will help you uh, to connect to a number of uh, CICD tools. So right. through them, you can manage your deployments for sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's my understanding as well. So I, right. I don't think that was related to SOA, however. SOA. Okay, yes. so let's go ahead um, and talk about what we as, as the SOA product team have done uh, additionally from the perspective of, uh, you know, features that Sandhya spoke about uh, apart from that. So one of the things that we've done is we've introduced SOA Suite on OCI Marketplace. Now OCI Marketplace is uh, the, the infrastructure on Oracle cloud infrastructure, so Oracle public cloud, to enable you to deploy SOA Suite 
in a much more efficient fashion, much closer to OCI native services than was possible earlier. What does that mean? That means that we have a ready uh, to deploy SOA image that all you need to do is provide some inputs to a wizard and that wizard does the provisioning according to the shape and the size of the image that, uh, that you have uh, provided. Um, this is available both as BYOL as well as UC subscription. What that means is uh, we, you can bring your own license. Customer license can be um, sort of on-prem license can be used to uh, deploy so on OCI marketplace. So there is a metric that's available for, uh, for the deployment or conversion of PROC license to the OCPU that you can run on SOA. What that means is uh, the SOA suite, you don't need to pay for that license. You need to only pay for the infrastructure services like compute, um, like networking, like uh, storage, et cetera. Uh, there's also a UC subscription available, which means you can subscribe to it uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, and there are two different SKUs available uh, that you can subscribe to. All the domain types that we support on-prem are also available on so on OCI Marketplace. So whether that is service bus domain type or uh, MFT, BAM, et cetera, all these are available on SOA OCI Marketplace as well. So essentially whatever you're doing on-prem can be done on cloud as well. The same set of scripts that you use on-prem could be used on cloud with probably a little bit of change um, specific to the, to the cloud environment. So the, the features that we have available, uh, you know, on the, on the SOA and OCI is uh, multiple. And I would, I would roughly split them into two parts. One, which is specific to the SOA deployment itself. So whether it is provisioning, deprovisioning, uh, whether it is scale up, scale down or scale in, scale out, all these are available within the OCI console. Uh, I will show you some screenshots of the provisioning uh, process. What it essentially does is it creates a Terraform script that then enables the, the deployment or the creation of the SOA domain. Uh, the scale up, scale down, or the scale in, scale out can again be achieved uh, from the OCI console, or you can run your scripts uh, to do that. Uh, we also have backup and restore, so you can go into OCI console and backup the entire volume, uh, all the volumes of a VM, um, and and use that to restore at a at a later point in time. You can start and stop as well. You can actually edit some of the um, some of the functionality for the domain, and the Terraform script will sort of you know reconcile with whatever changes you have done to the underlying uh, cluster. Uh, you continue to patch using OPatch. So the same process that you do on-prem is available on cloud as well. Uh, this supports the autonomous transaction processing as well as the uh, OCI native database. It uses OCI load balancer instead of the uh, traffic director. Uh, and this domain is optimized for most of the workloads that you're probably currently running on-prem. Uh, it also opens up ability for you to use a lot of OCI features, including the virtual networking that you can do. Um, so you can have this running in private subnet or public subnet and have a bastion server and, and so on and so forth. So NetNet, the, the deployment of SOA that you're running on-prem can very much be replicated over in OCI by using SOA on OCI uh, marketplace image. So what are the benefits uh, that you can articulate to the customers? Uh, the benefits are A, from optimizing cost perspective. Um, like I mentioned, you know, only the, uh, the, the infrastructure that you use um, gets, you, um, gets computed if you're using BYOL. Uh, on the other hand, the subscription is very, very, op, uh, you know, optimized cost to, to customer. And, uh, the additional ability is for you to make it part of the budget and the tracking uh, cost feature of OCI console itself. So you have a view directly of how much it is costing. You can set up budget policies. If it goes beyond a specific limit, then 
you know you can you can stop it and uh, those kind of things so the view of the utilization and how much it is costing is is always available to uh, to you uh, the environment gets you know provisioned within half an hour or so for for most type of the clusters and we can go up to eight uh, node cluster um, at the provisioning time itself of of where uh, of shapes and sizes that are very flexible um, and also most of the workloads that you're running on prem can be taken over uh, to cloud and uh, you know you can you can be up and running um, like i mentioned it uses the the oci networking uh, you have the oci security framework uh, that enables you to define access controls uh, even after you know you've defined subnets etc you can have more layers of security of who exactly has access to these so instances etc and of course you can uh, you can have access to a whole lot of oci services like the autonomous database or invoke functions um, you know using the uh, using the rest adapter etc so netnet we've built in an, an offering that makes it very attractive for uh, you to run soa on top of the oracle cloud infrastructure and do use the the soa on oci marketplace for this uh, the the next few slides we actually walk through uh, the provisioning experience this is the oci console that you log into and uh, as you can see over here the uh, the the place to navigate is to go into marketplace uh, within the oci console and then select applications when you select applications what happens is you get a search uh, window or a search bar uh, you just enter soa there you don't even need to hit enter uh, you see these three different offerings that we have available there's the bring bring your own license there is the soa suite paid and there is soa suite with b2b edi adapter so the difference between the soa suite paid and soa suite uh, b2b edi adapter paid is that the the latter one has the additional capability of b2b engine if your customer is not using b2b then you can just select soa suite paid if you want to go subscription or you can go byol and you know have uh, all the entitlements that customer has on their on prem uh, reflected in in cloud as well what i have done here is i have uh, rest of the uh, screenshots actually take up byol so when you click on on that particular slide you will uh, sorry the the uh, the button you will see that there are certain options available of the soa suite marketplace image itself the marketplace image is released every quarter so every quarter there are some new features that are available and that's what you see as 20.4.3.1 etc the soa suite uh, image that it has internally is 12 to 14 so that's the release or that's the version that customer uh, deployment should be on when you are moving to uh, oci and and using soa marketplace image over here i have used the quick start uh, as the example but um of course for setting up a customer environment you would use default the quick start is more for uh, doing evaluations doing quick uh, proof of concepts etc um so i'm using that but the default one gives you or asks you many more questions including the database um uh, you know uh, database credentials database uh, instance uh, it also asks you about network but as you will see quick start asks you minimum questions and gets you up and running you will see all that you need to provide is give it a name uh, this is of course optional because uh, the wizard automatically generates a name for you um, so you click on next and you go into the next uh, screen which asks you for providing an instance name prefix which i have provided as qs um, and then an ssh public key so i have uploaded my public key which is oci_soa.pub here uh, the administration password for the weblogic admin user um, so i have entered a password here and the next thing i do is click on next and what we what we get to see is uh, a summary screen 
which tells what is it that we have um, you know provided options to the wizard and if i click on click on create over there um, it starts a terraform job um, it has assumed certain things related to database it has assumed certain things related to network and with that assumption it starts running a provisioning um, experience and once that is done you see those instances up and running in your oci console uh, that's the job detail and and it provides you all the detail related to this particular instance and from that time onwards you can then manage it through the oci console uh, or you can do ssh and and start managing uh, as a regular uh, as a regular instance so so with that uh, i hope that gives you an overall view of what soan oci is all about uh, in the next slides we talk about another uh, you know feature or or product that we've launched which is the soan kubernetes so so on kubernetes uh, we introduced on uh, 19th october 2020 uh, and this was announced on on this particular blog article uh, what we have done is we are certifying soa suite docker image to be run on kubernetes for production workload and that i feel is is a pretty big step for us uh because what it enables customers to do <coughs> sorry is use a different type of virtualization for their for their workloads which is containers uh this is something that has been getting adopted um at a lot of customer places <coughs> sorry and we felt that this was the right time for us to to announce this so the the benefits of running soa um, soa uh, in a containerized mode are multiple and these come from the way docker and kubernetes are becoming the enterprise deployment fabric uh, for our customers uh, firstly increased portability uh, what we mean by that is kubernetes is, is becoming sort of low lowest common denominator uh between on prem deployments and on cloud deployments it's it's something that customers know and partners know is always available for for deployment of course kubernetes brings in a whole lot of um you know paradigms to the way applications are managed um right from how you scale up and scale down applications um to how you roll out patches and and upgrades um uh, to clusters um uh, to how do you uh, actually manage deployments uh, uh, deployments are quicker they are simpler they can be version maintained so uh, basically the kubernetes config files can be uh, maintained in in a version control system um, the changes that you make can all be tracked which is very very convenient from the perspective of managing a large deployment typical of how soa suite is is run today at multiple customers um so if you could go to the next slide sanjay we'll talk about what exactly have we made available so what are we making available first of all we are making available docker images of soa suite um so this is again soa suite 12214 uh we are not making docker images available uh, of earlier images certified for production uh, there are images available of 12213 and 12212 but those are only certified for dev and test what else we have done is we've uh, made available docker files uh, on github so you can take a look at that and and customize if required to um, you know to your to suit your requirement we also have extensive documentation on this and um, you know like i mentioned we provide production support so if you face an issue running soa suite on kubernetes you can open an sr in the same way that you do today uh, for the uh, for the production deployment and we will try and ascertain if the issue is related to soa suite or something else and if it is soa suite related then we will go ahead and will fix that particular issue so that is what we mean by uh, production support of of uh, uh, this particular configuration um so as i mentioned we make the docker image available of soa suite what this means is 
we give you a Docker image that consists of the thin layer of Oracle Linux, uh, on top of which we layer the server JRE, the FMW infra, including WebLogic server, and the SOA suite binary. So all this put together is the Docker image that's available. Um, you would uh, essentially do a Docker pull, or you can take the zipped uh, file of this particular image from, uh, from my Oracle support and do a Docker load uh, into your registry. And then uh, you can go ahead and, and deploy this. Uh, since we use the image layering of, of Docker, uh, any patches, et cetera, that you apply would be done in an efficient manner rather than pulling in every one of these layers uh, again. So, so that is something that we try and, and avoid. Um, let's go to the next slide where we talk about, uh, you know, something else that is needed to run SOA suite on Kubernetes, and that is a piece of software called WebLogic Kubernetes Operator. Uh, this particular software is an open source uh, product that's been developed by the WebLogic team, and it enables implementation of custom resource definition. What that means is, uh, since Kubernetes does not uh, understand what is a concept of WebLogic cluster, what is a managed server, what's an admin server, it needs to, to have someone, you know, sort of make that, uh, make that decision for the cluster. And that piece of software is the WebLogic Kubernetes operator. Um, what it does is it defines a, a custom resource called domain, which maps to the WebLogic domain, and then enables uh, ability or, or enables you as a, as a Kubernetes administrator to manage that domain as if you are managing a non-containerized, non-virtualized um, you know, WebLogic, uh, uh, WebLogic domain. What it also enables you to do is uh, do provisioning, lifecycle management, et cetera. So there are a lot of features with WebLogic Kubernetes operator. And I, as I mentioned, uh, this is again, something that's available on github.com. Um, you can take a look at this particular project. And if, uh, if you feel, you can also contribute to this particular project. So let's now look at how um, or what else uh, is required from a Kubernetes perspective. Um, Kubernetes also requires load balancers. Um, so these are very specialized load balancers um, specific to the way Kubernetes works. Um, there are open source ones, and there are also some that have you know, additional enterprise level uh, support contracts available. Um, so we certify doc, um, sorry, traffic, Voyager, uh, Nginx, as well as Apache, uh, for uh, as load balancers in front of the Kubernetes cluster. Of course, the question comes up as to how do we apply a one-off patch to this particular image? Um, there is something called WebLogic Image Tool that we use uh, to do this particular uh, work for you. So essentially, if you get a one-off patch, you use the WebLogic Image Tool to uh, generate a new Docker image and then do a rolling, uh, you know, uh, rolling patching of, of, the, of the entire cluster and, and make it up and running with the latest patch. So let's see how this gets deployed um, onto, the, onto the Kubernetes cluster itself, which we talk about in the next slide. So what we do is, uh, the first thing that you do is you get the remote um, images. So these images are WebLogic Kubernetes operator, the load balancer images, et cetera. And then you use a, a package manager called Helm to deploy both the operator and the load balancer in the Kubernetes cluster. Once you've done that, um, just click, uh, um, click once, Sandhya. Yeah. Uh, once you've done that, you would then uh, create what is called as Kubernetes secret um, and Kubernetes persistent volume. The persistent volume enables us to store uh, SOA related file artifacts in a, secu uh, in, a, in a disk image that is managed by Kubernetes. Uh, that's what the persistent volume within Kubernetes does. The next thing that we do is, is create an RCU. Uh, for production, the RCU should be outside of Kubernetes cluster. It should be a non-virtualized 
non-containerized uh, Oracle database. Uh, for dev test, you can use a Docker container of Oracle database, but not for production. So once you've created that, the next thing that you do is you use the, the kubectl create command um, to create the domain artifact. And then um, kubectl apply would essentially run the cluster. Um, the cluster here is one admin server and multiple managed servers as per your configuration. Uh, the domain type can be uh, SOA, the domain type can be service bus, the domain type can be ESS. And we basically create a cluster of, of that, which then you can manage using kubectl uh, post that particular, uh, once, the, once the domain is up and running. As you can also see, the SOA logs uh, and all other artifacts, which are file related are all stored in the persistent volume. So these are some of the resources um, uh, that you know help you find uh, the appropriate uh, you know uh, material related to the topics that we've covered today. Um, we hope this is going to be useful to you, um, you know, from the perspective of all the topics that uh, that we have discussed. Okay, so this particular slide covers the Oracle recommendation. Um, now, of course, at the at the customer place, there are uh, there are always these decisions being done as to what to do next. And if your customer is one of those customers, as we saw in the poll, uh, who, is, who is remaining on-prem, wants to continue on-prem, in that particular case, you continue with 12214, upgrade and update to the latest one, and then uptake 1412 as per uh, you know, the, the schedule that you set up. The other thing as an on-prem customer that can be done is to look at so on Kubernetes uh, deployment in case that's the strategy that the customer is adopting or that you are uh, recommending customer to, to adopt. Um, so that's from an on-prem perspective. Uh, if the customer is remaining on-prem with SOA, but also wants to do uh, you know, integration platform as a service, which means look at services like OIC, then you should get them to start looking at OIC because OIC has a whole lot of uh, functionality, feature functionality, and not just that, but as Sandhya showed you, it has native interoperability with SOA Suite. Uh, that's a huge plus point as far as OIC and SOA Suite are concerned. Um, if the customer, however, is looking to move out of on-prem and onto cloud, then SOA on, uh, SOA on OCI is available. Um, it's the easiest path to move an integration setup over to a public cloud like uh, OCI. Um, assume that customer wants to move over to OIC. In that particular case, we, we definitely should start engaging with customer in terms of creating a, a roadmap for them. Um, and we would be very happy to work with you on, on this particular front. Um, in fact, if you are developing tools to, to help with this particular, um, you know, or a framework to help with these, uh, you know, migrations, then we are more than happy to collaborate with you from a product management and an engineering perspective. So here are the opportunities that we see. Uh, first of all, migrating customers to so on Kubernetes, that's, that's an opportunity. Migrating uh, customers from on-prem to OCI. Um, and then the third one, importantly, and where we would definitely want to uh, work with you is SOA to OIC migration. Uh, this could be either tool-based approach or services-based approach where you've created a framework uh, to assess what the migration is going to be and how it will be achieved. Uh, we are very, very happy to engage with you and um, you know, work with you on, on a GTM. So with that, I would hand it back over to Jürgen uh, for, the, for the rest of the session. Jürgen, back to you. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Ravi and Sundia, for the great presentation. As you can see, SOA Suite Uplift to the Cloud is a great opportunity for you as a partner to generate service business. And we are interested to run joint activities like webcasts or e-blasts with you as a partner. So if you would like to run a campaign with us, uh, like we have done with multiple partners in the US and in Europe, please contact us. We are happy 
to target our thousands of Soar Suite customers, if you have a concrete offering to do that migration, if you would like to run a webcast with us and you follow up with us. To do that, please update your profile in the Partner Finder and Cloud Marketplace. And we require that you provide us with a win template. That's a success story to prove that you have done it successful, such an uplift. And we would like to ask you to develop a concrete offering with a next step and a campaign contact person. For questions, we offer our Slack channel. So we will go to the Q&A in a minute. If we can't answer all the questions, please post them in our Slack channel. And there we are happy to support you all month long. If you are not yet a member in the Slack channel, please go to tinyurl.com slash askoic. In the Slack channel, you get also our latest announcements like the next community webcast. The next community webcast will take place on February 23rd with Anthony Reynolds, and we will talk about Oracle Integration Cloud, scalability, and also high availability. To wrap up today's call, if you're not yet a member, please make sure that you register for our newsletter, and please try SourceSuite on the cloud infrastructure and as a hybrid approach with Oracle Integration Cloud. The free trials are available at oracle.com slash try it. And if you want to try OIC, we offer for partners the playground. If you would like to engage with us, please contact Ravi or myself. And for more information, visit the integration website at oracle.com slash integration. With that, we come to our Q&A session. So Ravi, we still have, and Sandhya, we still have plenty of questions. And yes. we, let's, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's get some of idea. them. Um, there's a question from Michael. Will SOA Suite on Kubernetes be able to support deployment strategies such as blue, green, red, black, and canary deployments? Um, yes, uh, we, we do that. In fact, uh, it is similar to another question uh, where uh, you know there, there's a question about reference architecture of SOA Suite over Kubernetes. Um, so we are working on enterprise deployment guide, uh, both from the perspective of what sort of strategies you can use and what do we recommend in terms of, you know, the, uh, the various decisions as to where the JMS should be, uh, what, how should it be deployed on, how do I achieve DR, uh, those kind of things, um, including the, the, the deployment strategies such as blue, green, et cetera. Um, so we are working on this enterprise deployment guide should be available um, in a couple of months time. And uh, we feel that is, uh, that's what would help, um, you know, with, with these, but yes, definitely um, something that uh, that's in the works. Great. And there was a question <clears throat> earlier and I read it out for the benefit of everybody. Is source suite all, is the source suite adapter already general availability? And can the SOA suite adapter in OIC for both on-premise versions as well as SOA on Marketplace and Kubernetes be used? Um, yeah, so I had actually answered that, uh, Jürgen. Um, so yes, uh, SOA adapter has been available for, uh, for, a, uh, for about six months now, actually. Um, and, and what uh, it can do is it can connect both to on-prem as well as uh, SOA on cloud. Um, and uh, it can be used, it should be possible to use it with so on Kubernetes as well, um, only that we've not yet tested it out. So that is something that um, that's under certification. But yes, um, the SOA adapter should be able to connect to both on-prem as well as on cloud. And I think Sandhya mentioned that you will need uh, the connectivity agent of OIC uh, to connect to so on-prem. Great. Thanks. If you have questions, you can still post them in the Q&A feature, or you can raise your hand and we can try to unmute you. Um, is there a reference architecture for Kubernetes and SOA suite available? No, that's what we are working on uh, with the maximum availability architecture team. Um, so this is something that is, uh, that's an, uh, in the works and should be available in a couple of months time. Great, thank you. 
Uh, what are the major differences between calling an endpoint directly via SOAP or using the source feed adapter? Um, uh, Sandhya, you want to take that? Yeah, so so a suite adapter would be uh, you no know, hiding all the complexities involved there, and when we go with the soap adapter, then uh, we use a soap whistle, and uh, we need to keep uh, you know uh, refreshing these uh, these uh, whistles. So with a so a suite adapter, uh, uh, things are even more uh, uh, simpler. Uh, we can choose either a service bus artifact or so artifact, and uh, everything can be discovered. At uh, uh, you know, uh, from OIC. So this discovery is easy and the connectivity, the connection establishment is easy. Yeah. Great. We have Michael on the line. Michael, congratulations and thank you for all your blog posts. You have a question. Yes, thank you very much. So you're going to have a question regarding the different deployment types. Oracle says, uh, so uh, on-premise on or Kubernetes, uh, uh, on the marketplace or on the OC, uh, OIC. So, uh, so is we on uh, OKE, how does Oracle approach that as on premise or as on cloud? So, so on OKE is is on our roadmap, uh, Michael. Uh, as of now, uh, you know the the so on marketplace uh, on is what is recommended or or set or available on OCI. Um, as I mentioned, we are working on certifying SOA on on OKE as well. So as soon as we are done, uh, you know, it should be available uh, to do that as well. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So thank you very much for all your questions. Thank you for attending today's webcast. If you have questions which we couldn't answer, please post them in the Slack channel and we will try to answer them also in the next days. You can also reach out to your Oracle partner manager or the team. Please make sure that you are in contact with the OPN team who can support you. Thanks for attending today's webcast and we are looking forward to welcome you on February 23rd for the webcast with Anton Reynolds. Thank you very much.